Hello there. Happy National Play Therapy Week. Today, I want to talk about what are the essentials of play therapy in, uh, in um, honoring National Play Therapy Week. So celebrating National Play Therapy Week. So what, what are the essentials of play therapies? And I'm a firm believer in if we're if we're a mental health professional and we're working with children, then we really need to understand the developmental needs that they have in play therapy, which is one of the reasons I really love using play therapy, because I think it really does meet their unique developmental needs in the psychotherapy process. So they're coming to us because something is going on and it's not going well. They're having some mental health challenges. And our job as mental health professionals is to help them overcome that challenge and thrive. So what do we do? We can pull out a board game. Many of us have known for a while that play helps engage children and build relationship. We kind of intrinsically know that. And we may even know that we can use art or something like that, or a game to help teach some skills. What I think is important though also is that they, that we understand there's, there's actually a way to create a framework that helps us to understand what's going on with our clients and how we can help our clients access those therapeutic powers of play. And that's where play therapy comes in. There's a whole framework around and theoretical model around using play in mental health treatment. And that's what I want to talk about today. So if you're joining me, go ahead and post your name in the comments. Let's see who's here. Where are you from? If you're watching the replay, post your name. Let's see where you're from. What population do you work with in the mental health field? What age children? What issues do you work with? And because it is National Play Therapy Week, let's post why do you use play therapy? Um, the Association for Play Therapy uh, has these forms on their website. It's the website for the Association for Play Therapy is the letter A, the number four, the letter P, like play, and the letter T, like therapy, a4pt.org. And you could do a Google search on there on National Play Therapy Week, and it'll you'll find some pictures that you can post in social media if you want to advance awareness of play therapy, since it's National Play Therapy Week. And you can fill out these cool little coloring sheets um, about why, why I use play therapy. And for me, the reason I love using play therapy, because I am a firm believer that it helps children heal and not only heal, it helps them thrive. And to me, that's the, that's the important piece. We want to help them thrive. So if you're posting, I'm sorry, <laughs> if you're watching, go ahead and post your name in the comments, where you're from. Uh, why do you use play therapy? And let's get started. So my my journey to play therapy actually started back in the mid 1980s. And at the time, I was a young special education teacher working with children with emotion uh, emotion problems. And I was a self contained teacher, and we had a like our own self contained school. And in this school, which was housed in a larger elementary school, um, in this school, we had a part-time school psychologist and a, a part-time social worker. So we, and the school psychologist and the school social worker both were learning this thing called play therapy. Now, mind you, I'm in my mid twenties. I'm fresh out of college. I don't even know there's a thing called therapy at this point in time. And, um, and they're using this thing called play therapy. Hello, uh, Busra. I hope I pronounced your name right. It is so good to see you from London. Oh, you're in DC. 
that is from my neck of the woods. I hail from the Northern Virginia side, just outside of Washington, D.C. That's awesome. I hope you're enjoying Washington, D.C. It's probably a little cold right now. You might even have some snow. Uh, and I hope you're doing all of the touristy things like going to the museums and things like that. That's awesome. Oh, and you're working towards becoming a play therapist. That is so, so awesome. I know in England, they have the British Association for Play Therapy. And um, I know they have some other play therapy certification processes too. And so they, they take that process seriously as well. And so I think that's really awesome. So here I am as a, as a, young special education teacher, the school social worker and the school psychologist are taking kids from my class into their office and there's, <laughs> they're doing something with these blocks. And then I remember the one time the school social worker came to get me, like I came and got the student and was bringing the student back to my classroom. And then, um, or I think she was bringing him back. And then she invited me to into her office to see what my student had done and something with blocks. And she was so excited to show me what my student had created with the blocks in their play therapy session. And I remember looking at it in my mid twenties thinking it's blocks. I don't see, <laughs> it's like they played with blocks because I, I didn't understand. Then she invited me, she asked me if I'd be willing to do a play therapy group with her. And about this time, the, the Uses of Enchantment by Bruno Bettelheim had come out. It was a new book at the time. So this is back in the 80s. And in, uh, in this book, Bruno Bettelheim looked at fairy tales from a psychotherapy standpoint using Freudian so uh, psychotherapy. So really kind of looking at the themes and the metaphors and how that um, manifest psychologically and all that kind of stuff. And so she asked me if I would be willing to, she explained, we can use fairy tales and we'll do play and we'll get the kids to act them out and you can participate. And she was going to narrate. She would pick which fairy tale we did. She would narrate the story. We'd all be assigned parts. And of course, I was always assigned the part as the evil grown up in the play. And we would act it out. And I, I have to say, I, I die well, and I thoroughly enjoy uh, ways in which I came to my demise. And we would laugh, and we would act things out. And, and we did that for several weeks, different play therapy groups is what she called them. And I was hooked. I've always known that I wanted to work with children. That's never been something that was a mystery to me. I've since learned that's kind of a, a novelty. And when she introduced me, when that school psychologist introduced me to play therapy groups, and I saw the impact that it had in my classroom, in my relationships with the kids, because mind you, these were kids who were, who were experiencing emotion regulation problems, to the point that they could not be in a regular classroom because their mental health problems were interfering with their ability to make academic um, progress. So they were in this self-contained, small self-contained classroom. So they, they had big challenges they were working through, big mental health challenges they were working through. And I remember seeing just the calm after we would do these groups and we would play them out and we would laugh and we would connect and they would get to act out different things of how they overcame this, this evil adult, this challenge in their life. And think about it from a kid's point of view, grownups are in charge of the world. And they don't always like what the grownups in their lives are doing. So be, being able to have that opportunity, I saw the benefit. And from that, I was hooked. And I learned about this therapy thing. So from then, I went on to uh, graduate school, got my master's degree. And in graduate school, again, mind you, I knew I wanted to work in play therapy. They, I took one class 
one class in graduate school. Now, mind you, this is back in the early 90s, so it might, it might be a little different now. I know the play therapy, uh, the Association for Play Therapy, there are universities where there's a play therapy program to get certified. Most universities don't. Most universities don't have a play therapy program. So I graduated and knowing about play therapy, not having been trained in play therapy, and now I'm going into my job and entering into the work world, knowing I want to work with children and adolescents. So in my job, there was a playroom and nobody knew how to use the playroom. And how do I know that? I know that because I would ask, because I wanted to use this playroom. I knew there was a way. I just didn't know how, because somebody else had done it before, and I just followed along. Now I have my master's of social work, and I'm working towards licensing, and I want to use this therapeutically. But I, there was no way. So I was trying, and I would try some different things, and I would talk them through with my supervisor at the time. I'll be honest though, it was really uncomfortable. So I, I knew about play therapy. I knew there was a way to use it. What I didn't know was how to do it. How do I help those children access those therapeutic powers of play? And to me, that's why it's important. That's the difference between being a play therapist and being a, a therapist using more of an adult model and pulling out board games and art supplies. And I know that because I did it. I did it the other way. It was horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. I was fudging along, hoping I didn't do things as badly as I felt like I was doing until eventually I found somebody who connected me with a supervisor who knew how to use play therapy I got connected to training, so I got knowledge about play therapy and how to use it. And then I had the supervision to help me apply that knowledge. Was it pricey? Yes. Did it take a lot of time? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes. Because now I have a framework. I can be, I am way more effective than I was when I was getting started and I didn't know what I was doing. And Ethically, I feel like there was a, I, I felt a lot more ethical. I knew how to engage clients more effectively. I knew how to engage their parents more effectively. I knew how to recognize what was going on in the play therapy process. And here's the thing. I knew how to help children access those therapeutic powers of play. So what sets play therapy apart from just your traditional therapy and pulling out games and activities. Play therapy, oh, let me pull up my banner here. What is play therapy? Play therapy is uses a theoretical framework that dictates how you're gonna use those therapeutic powers of play. It helps you know how to help children access those because play in and of itself we know is healing knowing how to help children access those therapeutic powers of play in the therapeutic process and helping facilitate that process depends on the theoretical model that you're using. And there are so many theoretical models. There's child-centered play therapy. There's Adlerian play therapy, Jungian play therapy, Gestalt play therapy, um, it, uh, prescriptive play therapy, theraplay, filial therapy. There's every one of those models has a way in which they apply the theory using the therapeutic powers of play. So the Association for Play Therapy defines play therapy as the systematic use of a theoretical model to establish an interpersonal process wherein trained play therapists use the therapeutic powers of play to help clients prevent or resolve psychosocial difficulties and achieve optimal growth and development. Yes, that, <laughs> that is on the APT website. Yeah, 
So, so there's a way in which there's a framework, there's a way theory drives application. And depending on which theoretical model you use determines the application. And uh, Busra, I'm curious which theoretical model you guys are learning there. Uh, you said you're working towards becoming a play therapist. And I'm assuming that's in um, England since you said you're from London. Uh, so which which models are you learning? Do you have a favorite one that you're learning? Or are you just kind of in that learning mode where you're learning all of them and trying to figure out which one you like the best? Um, and what what population do you work with? So so how how we use play therapy is determined by the theoretical model that we're using and how are we helping children, even adolescents, use those therapeutic, um, access those therapeutic powers of play? That's what sets play therapy apart from traditional therapy in which we pull out games and art supplies. So what are the therapeutic powers of play? Charles Schaefer, he wrote a book back in 1993. That one, There's an updated version in 2014. And Charles Schaefer identified that there are therapeutic elements in play that when used by a trained professional, help children overcome their mental health challenges. So play itself, according to Charles Schaefer, play itself is the source of the healing. That's the source of the change for children. And then a trained professional will help children know how to access that for the healing process. And he, um, he, Dr. Charles Schaefer and Dr. Athena Drews in 2014 updated that and they identified 20 core elements of play and they categorized them into four categories of change using play. The first one is play facilitates communication we can identify, um, express ourselves. We can have access to the unconscious because sometimes through play, that's the beauty of play. They don't necessarily have to have language to and the cognitive wherewithal to explain to you what is actually going on. I've worked with adults. Adults don't always know how to do that. And I've had to pull out the feelings, the feeling sheet and had them identify feelings because they don't know either. I mean, if, if adults struggle with that, being able to expect children to be able to cognitively express and explain what's going on is not necessarily going to be effective. Some children can, a lot of children can't. And the younger they are, the more challenging that becomes. And we know that earlier intervention can help children much, uh, they can much more effectively than the later we get them. Oh, and Bosara said, completed a course that focused predominantly, oh, child-centered play therapy. Yes, that one is so hard to learn. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, if I have to say this weird statement one more time, in my head, my my head might explode. Uh, eventually, I got really comfortable. And now it's just like so automatic. I just do it naturally now. It took a while, though. <laughs> um, still in the process of discovering which model is my favorite. Yeah. Is it possible to somehow use and integrate different models? Or would it be best to take one and focus? That is a great question. I think that I think the vast majority of us will use an integrated approach, meaning um, I think of it as one size doesn't fit all. So I would say child-centered play therapy is my default mode. And then depending on the needs and predominantly depending on the age of the child, I may use a different theoretical model and integrate it into the play therapy process. And I think most of us, do that. And I think um, learning how to do that does take some time. I think you downloaded some of a couple of my 
PDFs that um, kind of create a framework for using uh, more of an integrated approach. Because what I found was, especially as the children get a little older, like 9, 10, 11, definitely into adolescence, um, having another kind of a framework is more effective. And if I have some kind of a framework that that accesses, there are some basic things I think that most play therapy models use as a foundation to the therapeutic rapport and the process. And that's relationship and how am I doing that? Uh, how am I doing that clinical conceptualization of what the problem is, like what's going on with my client underneath their presenting behaviors? Um, and how am I, what, what theoretical model am I using to conceptualize that? Because theory drives application. I like using, other than child-centered play therapy, I, I like using a little bit of Jungian informed. So with art and Santra, you can see all my Santra figures in the background here. Um, and then also I, I really love using attachment theory and neuroscience in the play therapy process because that kind of helps me navigate and decide what kind of play therapy interventions that I need to use based on how I'm conceptualizing what's going on based on attachment theory and neuroscience. So I think if you're if you're learning child-centered play therapy now, I think that is awesome and because that one does take some time to learn, I, I found. Um, so learn that one. And then as you're going through your professional journey, you're going to add more tools to your toolbox, so to speak. And you will um, then develop a way in which you're doing that decision making of what what's going on with my client, what intervention do I need to use, how do I know if it's working. <clears throat> and I actually have, um, if you're interested, I actually have, I think you're in my Facebook group, so you can go into the featured section. I do have some past replays of some of uh, using more of an integrated approach. And for anyone watching who's not in my Facebook group, I, I go live every week on, um, on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Pacific time here in the United States, so Los Angeles time. And I talk about all things play therapy and expressive arts. I will live stream into my Facebook group, which is Play and Expressive Arts Therapy Playground. I'll do different, um, uh, I'll do like a monthly book club in there. I'm really excited this month. I have two authors who are, uh, are going to be talking about a book for children about parents divorcing. Um, so I'll do other things in that group. I, I live stream here into LinkedIn every Wednesday. So sometimes you can find some of the replays if you scroll through my activity, which is a little cumbersome. Um, I also live stream into YouTube and in my YouTube channel, Kathy Spooner, Renewing Hearts, you can find a lot of the replays there. So that's might be the easiest place to find them. And I do talk about that in past live stream replay episodes, if you might find that helpful. I would definitely say, though, getting a good, solid foundation using child-centered play therapy is a great way to start. Alrighty, so what what are the therapeutic powers of play, and um, facilitates communication? So self expression, access to the unconscious. You can do direct teaching, like some CBT, or even some indirect. And and I would say child centered play therapy is a little bit more indirect teaching because of the way in which you track and follow your young clients through that play therapy session and that play therapy process. The other category is that of the therapeutic power of play is that play helps to foster emotional wellness. Um, so different ways that we help clients who use play to work through some of those really challenging and hard 
emotions and experiences and help them reduce their level of reactivity based on maybe being emotionally triggered by certain events or shutting down emotionally, things like that helps to manage their stress more effectively because we can teach them different skills based on the model that we're using. Like child-centered play therapy follows the child's lead. So we know using that when the child will naturally work towards intrinsic healing and whole, well, intrinsically work towards healing and wholeness given the free and protected space. And so that free and protected space is where that healing process um, works itself out through the model that you use. Um, yes, Busara said, I would love to join your lives on Facebook too. That would be, you know what? I was just thinking about that. I might have some people join me. Um, that would be so interesting, especially I would love to see and hear more about what play therapists are doing over there in England with, um, cause it really sounds like you're doing some really amazing things over there as well. Um, so another, another therapeutic power of play category would be enhances social relationships. If you have ever seen kids on the playground, you know, they work through play in their relationships. Um, like little kids, they don't necessarily need to know the names of kids if they're on the playground, they'll play because that's how they build relationship. That's how they learn about each other. They enjoy it. So it helps with those relationships. Um, it helps attachment. We all as mental health professionals working with children know that, ch that play, if we engage with children in play, that's how we build relationship. I always tell new therapists that I supervise because I have an online supervision group. Um, and I used to do it in person way back, way back in the day when I lived outside of Washington, DC. Um, how, how do you form relationships with children? You play. How do you form relationships with adults? You have to talk to them. So it's different because developmentally we're different from when we're children versus when we're, we're adults. And I would say adolescence is kind of that as they're moving through adolescence, they're launching towards adulthood. So even understanding how to help teenagers access those therapeutic powers of play in the treatment process is beneficial as well. Um, and also the, the fourth category is that play increases personal strengths, helps develop some resiliency, helps problem solve, figuring out that creative problem solving. I, I see that a lot in child-centered play therapy. I watching them work through challenges because I'm following, I'm not leading. And then how do they do that? What's their distress tolerance level? How do they work through a, a challenge? Do they ask for help too soon or do they not ask for help at all? What do they do if I don't necessarily hop in to save the day? Like grownups usually, you know, because we're helpful, we want to help uh, help kids. So we'll naturally jump in. But what happens if I don't and I'll allow the child some time to work through that problem um, and figure out a solution? And it helps, uh, play helps with self-regulation and self-esteem. So these are, these are the things that make play therapy different than traditional play therapy, pulling out games and toys and art supplies. So that is it for today. I am so glad you're able to join us, Busra. Um, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, and so let me do a little recap. So play therapy is grounded in a theoretical model that dictates the implementation of that play therapy model. model. Uh, theory drives application. So how, whatever the theoretical model is, determines how you're going to help children access those therapeutic powers of play. And what does that look like from session to session for that child to help them overcome whatever challenge it is that they're facing. And the therapeutic powers of play are foundational to play therapy. 
And these uh, therapeutic powers of play are facilitates communication, fosters emotional wellness, enhances relationships, and increases personal strengths. And if you want, there's a the the book is the therapeutic powers of play, um, and the authors are Dr. Charles Schaefer and Athena Drews. I probably got that title a little bit wrong, and I got enough. If you do an Amazon search, you will find it. Um, you can also go on the Association for Play Therapy website and download the PDF. They have a PDF about the therapeutic powers of play. It's just a one page that has all of the 20 elements, if that's of interest to you. Um, so that is it for today. Thank you for joining me. If you're watching on the replay, go ahead and post, um, post your name. How are you using play therapy? What do you love about play therapy? All right. And if you're interested, I have a PDF, which I'll post a link in the comment if you're interested. It's five of my mindfulness-based play therapy activities for emotion regulation. They're five of my favorite ones that I really love to use. Um, so that is it for today. If you're... Um, interested, you can get the P I'll post the link for that P my PDF in the comments below. If you're interested, you can go to my website. This one has my trainings. Um, but if you go to www.rrhcounseling.com forward slash links, you will find that there. And I will post that in the comments below. And it was awesome meeting with you guys today and I will see you next week. Bye.